Hey, Vince Riley here, CFI, double I, fixed wing and rotor wing. Today, I'm going to discuss one of the most anxiety causing situations for new and even some experienced pilots flying in Class B airspace. If you forget everything I teach in this video, remember one thing the number one rule is this ATC works for you. Seriously. Let's start with a view of one of the busiest Class B areas in the western U.S., Los Angeles. To a new pilot, this truly might look like hieroglyphics, and everyone knows how easy it is to translate hieroglyphics, right? Here's a dude watching TV in his living room when his hawk and snake homies show up with chips, dip, and a cool beetle video game. <coughs> Seriously though, working with ATC is like learning a new language, but once you learn why they do what they do and how they do it, it's easy. So let's look at some resources we have available for congested areas. Using ForeFlight and an iPad, you can zoom in and see the terminal area chart. If zooming in does not bring up the terminal area chart, then make sure you have your map touch actions set to either bring chart to front or no action. If you have it set to bring chart to front with legends, then the tack chart won't show up. Additionally, you can select the flyway chart, which is printed on the back of the tack chart, like this. The flyway chart gives more specific details and routes to be flown if operating in the congested area. Unfortunately, in ForeFlight, the geo-rectified TAC and flyway charts do not have the airport-specific information found on the tabs. This complete chart can be downloaded for free from the FAA. There's a link below with the website address. You can get all of the TAC charts and flyway charts free in PDF form from the FAA. For example, with the additional information on the LA chart, here are specific instructions on operations directly in and out of LAX. Now, let's talk a little about ATC. Joint Order 7110.65 not only specifies the responsibilities and duties of ATC, but also provides examples of how ATC communicates with you to coordinate your flight. So it's a really good source to be able to refer to. I put a link in the description below. In this joint order, it states that the priority of ATC is to prevent collision for airborne aircraft. Additionally, it provides verbology for ATC to use when communicating with aircraft. For example, when ATC uses the term Resume Ohm Navigation. These words come right out of this joint order. So first, we'll start by talking about the process of entering Class B airspace and an airport located within the Class B. For this example, we'll start with Honolulu. Honolulu is one of the smallest Class B areas and is relatively easy to get in and out of. I also have some personal experience with Honolulu, so I wanted to share it. I needed to ferry an aircraft from the island of Kauai to Honolulu so this was my first time entering Honolulu Class B. So I needed to learn as much about Honolulu Class B as possible. As a pre-flight step, it's essential to familiarize yourself with the airport and its surrounding airspace. This should include becoming familiar with the VFR waypoints which are used for directing traffic in and out of the airport. These waypoints are the magenta flags found on the VFR sectional and the TAC charts and are usually named after prominent terrain features like dams, unique buildings, freeway intersections, etc., which are easily recognizable from the air. The first step, just outside the 30 nautical mile ring, is to obtain the current ATIS when headed towards Class B airspace. Once you have the ATIS information, you'll want to contact whichever approach control is listed on the VFR sectional or terminal area chart. My call was something like this. Honolulu Approach, Skyhawk November 1234 Echo, 30 miles to the west at 5,500, inbound for landing with information Delta. Approach will then assign a transponder code and have you ident. My response was to read back what Approach told me to do, then added my call sign at the end. Once they identify your aircraft, they confirm your location, the current altimeter setting, provide instructions about remaining outside Class B airspace, assign an altitude, and probably some sort of route or checkpoint. In this instance, Approach told me to call Harborview. Remember, I'd never been to Honolulu, and though I know there's a waypoint on the map that I can fly to with a GPS, I wasn't familiar what I was looking for on the ground. So, remember the number one rule, ATC works for you. Here's what I said in response. Skyhawk 34 Echo will remain outside of Class B airspace at Harborview above 1,500, and I'm unfamiliar with Harborview, so what am I looking for on the ground? His response was simple and pretty easy to understand. He explained that Harborview was a small mall in the vicinity of a large highway intersection. Before I had ForeFlight on my iPad, sometimes I would just ask for a heading to get me in the general location and they would always assist. Shortly before reaching the VFR waypoint, Approach told me to contact Honolulu Tower. 
I read back my instructions and followed with my call sign. Remember, Approach Control started a flight strip on me that they handed over to Tower, so Tower already knew what my intent was, so I didn't have to provide a lot of information again. My next call sounded something like this. Honolulu Tower, Skyhawk November 1234 Echo, Harborview, 1500. Remember, you have to have permission to enter Class B airspace, so the tower controller's call has to include either a restriction to stay out of or permission to enter Class B airspace. Tower's call was something like this. Skyhawk 34 Echo, cleared to enter Class B. Maintain 1000, direct Navy Marine Golf Course. Expect right base, runway 22 left. Remember, part of the pre-flight process is to familiarize ourselves with as much information about the airport as we can. All of this information can be found on the airport diagrams and the chart supplement, formerly known as the Airport Facility Directory, or the AFD. Because most of what happens next is the same at any towered airport, we don't need to go into more detail, so we'll jump right to the departure from Class B airspace. Remember, you always need permission to operate in Class B airspace, so before you call ground, you'll need to contact clearance delivery, or if there's no clearance delivery, contact ground directly and get permission to depart. That conversation goes something like this. Honolulu Clearance Delivery, Skyhawk November 1234 Echo, Parked Harbor FBO, requesting VFR departure to the west with information Charlie. Do you remember the acronym CRAFT? Well, when you get your clearance from Clearance Delivery, it will come in that order. Clearance, Route, Altitude, Frequency, and then Transponder. And any void time, but for VFR departure, you won't get a void time. Note that the frequency they give is used after you have departed and Tower tells you to contact departure. In this example, my clearance came as Skyhawk November 1234 Echo, cleared out of Class B airspace, maintained 2500, contact departure, blah blah blah, whatever frequency, and then squawk 4221. Then you just read back the clearance. So now, just like arriving, the information you gave to clearance delivery is delivered to ground control and then subsequently to tower and then departure control. So there's no reason to be long worded or really verbose when contacting ground and tower. One more thing to remember, even when taxiing, your transponder should always be left in the altitude reporting mode. Now let's review. Remember rule number one? Take a deep breath and remember why ATC is there and that they work for you. Next, familiarize yourself with the VFR corridors and procedures on the terminal area chart, the flyway charts, airport diagrams, and the chart supplement during your pre-flight planning. Also, don't hesitate to contact ATC by phone if you have specific questions about their peak departure and arrival times for the airlines. As an experienced pilot, even I try to avoid their busiest periods which usually occur twice a day. Next, and most importantly, don't hesitate to ask for help or clarification if needed. Always refer back to the number one rule, ATC works for you, they're there to help. However, a warning here, if you do not do your research, don't expect ATC to fly you around their Class B airspace to get you to the airport. That is not their job. And remember, the only difference between a Class B airport and a towered airport is you need permission to enter Class B airspace and to exit Class B airspace. So make sure you call clearance delivery before taxiing when it's time to leave. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll know when I release my follow on video about Class B airspace around Atlanta. And after that, the next video will actually cover Los Angeles. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Here are two other videos you might enjoy.